Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Chalk Talk, made possible by the Basketball Coaches Association of Michigan. My name is Carol Lyles, and joining us this week is Buchanan Girls Varsity Basketball Coach, Head Coach Gabe Miller. Coach, thanks so much for joining us this week. Hey, thank you for having me. Absolutely. Well, you've been in the basketball world for a while now, so why, I want to go back to the beginning. How did you sort of get started in this basketball world, and what led you to Buchanan? Uh, I guess if we're going back to the beginning. It's just a sport like many, I guess, fell in love with. Probably as a seven, eight-year-old, dad put up a hoop in a pole barn, and um, it's a sport you could go out and play by yourself. And I guess through my youth, you grew up idolizing the Detroit Pistons and, and Joe Dumars and Isaiah Thomas, and I had friends that liked playing basketball, and that's kind of where we got our social interaction and our competitiveness and, and, and uh, just the sport I love. Um, brought me to Buchanan was a teaching opportunity. Um, didn't know how long I'd be teaching, didn't know I was going to be coaching, and I think uh, my principal that first year pegged me to be the middle school coach because she wanted me to be involved in the community. And um, been coaching here ever since. This is my 20th year in Buchanan, so I've um, been doing doing it for a while. Uh, 10 varsity um, campaigns under my belt now and, and 10 middle school campaigns. So you mentioned that you've been there for a while now, but what was it that attracted you to the program? Was there something that you were like, I want to be a part of that? Um, I think, you know, when it comes to playing basketball, it's a sport that I really enjoyed. Um, I think there's a love for it. I think it, you know, all the coaches talk about it, but the idea of teaching you teamwork and how to deal with failure and success, a lot of good life lessons when you're working with kids um, that can be taught, you know, through the sport, probably through any sport. Um, and it was something that seemed I had a knack for. Uh, what, what brought me to take the jump to varsity uh, was a push from a few former middle school players. Um, you know, we were starting a family at the time, so it wasn't quite the ideal time. Um, but, uh, when the opportunity happened, they came and asked, um, and I had a talented, um, middle school group at that time. And, um, I made the jump to the, uh, the next level, so to speak at the varsity level. And you're having so much success at the varsity level. Is there anything that you can sort of tr contribute that success to so early in your career? Um, it's, it's a lot of hard work. Um, and I guess, you know, one thing, you know, that's, you know, it's, you know, just for me as a player, it, it's a sport you got to put in some time on your own um, in the off season in order to, you know, achieve your goals if your goals are to win. Um, I think the competitiveness of our league, especially having a strong program like Niles Brandywine, um, you know, pushed us to work harder too. And then, you know, as, as far as success, you're as good as the athletes and the parents, too. I, you know, they have a big role in this. You know, do you have parents buy in and help you get, you know, kids at the youth level to certain events and get them to participate and get up in the mornings when they may not want to? And, and do you get a little lucky and have a little height and, and speed on your team, too? And, and so at a small community like that, we've, you know, over the 10 years, we've been blessed with that. Um, you know, usually have a pretty competitive team this year's, you know, kind of set the bar pretty high. But, uh, um it's definitely not just one thing. There's a lot of things that go in to get involved in order to, you know, compete year in and year out. And you mentioned your community. You know, Buchanan isn't this huge school. How important no. is it that the community plays a role in the success of your basketball team? Um, you know, it plays a huge role. Like, you know, I, I guess going the last 10 years, I, I've had kids of parents that played in the 1990s uh, state championship team for the girls. Um, you know, one of my assistant coaches played on the 78 state championship for the boys. Um, and so it, it is kind of a, being so close to Northern Indiana, I think there's a little more basketball, um, fever down here, but you definitely need some community buy-in and you need, you know, parents that like, you know, support the sports and those extracurricular activities. And, and that's been big, you know, um, as far as, you know, not having to worry about kids missing practices and things like that. And. And I've been lucky in that scenario. And because of that, we've been able to, you know, like I said, have our success. That's a big part of it. If you don't have community buy-in uh, or buy-in from the student athletes, um, it, it's gonna be tough no matter how good of a coach you are to experience much success. Absolutely, and one of your seniors, Faith Carson, I mean, she's having a fantastic season. She's a Miss Basketball mm -hmm. finalist going to Ohio State. What is it like having her on your team? Um, obviously a blessing. Uh, you know, to have that much height and size. You know, my first years, we were pretty successful, but we didn't have a lot of size, not a lot of height. 
Um, so then you see Faith as a youth, you know, walking around, and, and I was familiar with her family by coaching her older cousin and, and seeing her brother grow. Um, but she's really developed into a player, I think, beyond what you would have expected, at least for me, when I seen her as a fourth, fifth, sixth grader. Um, put a lot of hard work in, you know, she, she uh, um, you know, her junior season wasn't what we liked. She spent a lot of time preparing for that year, and then she, you know, hurt her ankle playing volleyball. And she was out all last year. So watching her determination to get back on the court has been great. Um, really blessed to have her on our side. And, um, you know, just, uh, you know, sometimes you're just lucky to be in the right situation. And I think uh, that's where I, I was at right now, you know, or where I'm at right now. You mentioned her, you know, sort of fighting back from injury, working her way through that injury. Would you say that she's, yeah. you know, sort of setting the tone for the team that we can do this, you know, if we put in the work, we can do it? I think, you know, her work ethic, you know, um, this fall, you know, trying to text teammates to get him in the gym in the mornings, you know, after she lifted it and, you know, and, and at the same time she was, uh, I think she was the league MVP of a volleyball team that made a big run. So she was, you know, doing her stuff in the morning and then going to play volleyball for the school in the evenings. Um, I think that's a part of it, but I also think, you know, we've got some talented athletes that play multi-sports and, you know, when Faith was out last year, we didn't just kind of fold the tents. Uh, we set up a challenging schedule, thought we'd be pretty good last year with Faith when she wasn't able to go. Um, you know, there's some senior leadership, but a lot of kids, you know, that are still on the team this year that played and we wound up making it to a regional final last year um, without her, you know, and I think it's a combination of everybody. It's not just one person who's kind of setting the tone. Um, you know, I've got a couple seniors and Jillian McKean and Hannah Tompkins have been with us for three or four years. Uh, my juniors, Labrie Austin and, and Hannah Herman have also been with us for three years. And, you know, Hannah excels. She's going to Michigan State on a softball scholarship. And she's one of the hardest working kids, always in the gym. Um, and then, you know, I, I've got some talented sophomores, too, that have contributed this year that, you know, might have played JV last year some. So it's it's kind of a whole group aspect, you know, that they push and pull each other um, in practice. And, you know, and we've been lucky to, you know, have the season we've had because of that, you know. How well do they get along outside of the court? I mean, this is a question I feel like I ask every week, but I love talking about like team bonding and, you know, how you get them to stay so connected all season. Do you guys do anything fun like that? They they really like their Chick-fil-A. Um, okay. So, you know, there's, there's, <laughs> there's been some Chick, Chick-fil-A dinners or impromptu dinners or, you know, they, uh, you know, they'll come up and support the boys and we'll pick up some pizza um you know i know they've had i think some sleepovers and, and sometimes i let the captains take care of that and, and that definitely does help because it is a long season yep it's a grueling season um when, when you're out there and you have to bump in and bump off faith and practice you know we talk about that that sometimes you know that that's part of the process that you know you should have bumps and bruises coming out of practice but that you know you shouldn't take it personally that's that's how we're going to get better and help prepare right. us for the tournament um, so they do a good job of that on their own. You know, there's a lot of silly stories. Some I might share, some I probably shouldn't share that I hear. <laughs> um, but they do seem to get along pretty well off the court. And that makes things easier, you know, for me as a coach, especially with dealing with, you know, teenagers. Sometimes it doesn't work that well. Right. We've all been there, right? We've all been yeah. teenagers at one point. <laughs> well, yep. you've, really, <laughs> you've really preached, you know, as we get into tournament play and as we continue towards state, that it's one and done, you know? How has yeah. your how have your girls really been able to handle that? I know going into it, it can be intimidating knowing that this can be your last game. How do they handle that sort of pressure? Well, we've uh, this is our third year winning districts. Um, you know, first year was Division Two, then last year, um, you know, very good school craft team beat us. Um, but we, we've we've talked about it. it. It takes one bad night. You know, if you follow basketball, whether it's uh, high school or college. Um, it, it's not a best of seven series, and we've, you know, talked about, like, it's not the best team always wins. It's, you know, you got a bad night, an off night, an injury here, there. Um, your season ends, and it's it's 32 minutes. It's pretty finite, and so we've talked about that. You know, I know one thing, preseason for a team bonding thing, we went and watched a, you know, very, very good South Bend, Washington team in Indiana play. Um, I think they were, you know, ranked nationally. And I know I think they lost in their, their regional finals or their semifinals. And, and you know, we've kind of harped on that because their tournament gets wrapped up before ours. Now, you know, one bad night and that's it. So that's, you know, kind of helped us maintain the focus. And we got a game tonight against a very good team. And hopefully we can maintain that focus a little while longer. Well, good luck tonight. I got one more question for you. you. And I think okay. I know where you're headed with this. But what are your okay. hopes for the rest of the season? Uh, our hopes, you know, are, are that we play well. You know, obviously that we play for each other, 
you know, play unselfishly, you know, do the little things on defense and communicate and that, you know, our, our hopes are to make it as far as we can. Um, hopefully visit East Lansing, but we know there's, there's no easy way around it. There's nothing but really great teams from here on out. You know, we, we played a great team Saturday in our district final, um, but we have to make sure we, we bring uh, a level of competition and focus and discipline every night. And if we do that, we know we'll be tough to beat, but, um, you know, it's uh, there's no guarantee. So, you know, our hopes to make it to East Lansing, um, but it'll take a little luck and a lot of focus, and we'll see what happens. All righty, Coach, that's all we had for you. This wraps up right. this edition of Chalk Talk. For more information on the Basketball Coaches Association of Michigan or to nominate a coach for Coach of the Week, simply visit bcam.org. Coach, thanks so much for chatting with us today, and good yeah, luck tonight you. and the rest of the season. All right, thank you.